Back when Office first came out, presenting courses was a lot easier in some ways because they were, in the grand scheme of things, a lot more simple. Today, applications are very complex. They're interrelated, which makes trying to teach everything about them in a short period of time very difficult. So when it came time for me to create the Office 2010 series for total training, we decided to optimize learning by not having to repeat instruction on features that are found in common throughout the application suite. Instead, we wrote the Office 2010 Shared Features series so that you only have to learn those common skills once, and you can apply it to any of the applications, and that way we don't waste your time repeating things series after series after series. This lesson is about many of those features. So what we want to do is simply review them or touch on them here, but not go into a lot of detail. With that said, let's go ahead and round out our discussion on other types of content we can have in Word by adding some visual impact through the use of images, word art, and smart art. Now I think if we think about it at all, we know that images add visual impact to documents, as well as helping tell a story or maybe illustrating a concept, even branding the document for our company or organization. For the You Got It business plan, for example, we might choose to put our company logo on the cover page. We might choose to put a picture of one of our actual training sessions in the section that we have on the services that we provide. One of Office 2010's long-awaited-for capabilities, though, is the option to insert a screenshot directly from our computer or web browser, which is absolutely phenomenal for a person like myself that teaches and creates curriculum based on exactly those kinds of images. What we're going to do is go to the section of our business plan where we discuss the website and insert an actual screenshot of the website homepage. So let's start by finding that. We currently are on page 16, and we just need to scroll up a couple of pages. So using my mouse, I'm just going to scroll up. And what we're looking for is actually the part that says Website. Let me go ahead and click on it so we can see where it is. Right here, near the bottom of page 14. Now this is where we want to put the picture, so let's go ahead and add space for that. We'll click after the word Website and press Enter. And now we're ready to insert the screenshot, which is again from the Insert menu. We know that we can also insert clip art from here, actual picture files that we already have, and even work with different types of shapes. All of these things share something in common, which is that they are inserted or added from this menu, and that they behave or have properties that are very similar. In our case, we don't have any of these, and we don't want to create them. We want to come over under the Illustrations group where it says Screenshot. This provides access to any windows that we currently have running, but we want to take just a portion of a window, so we're going to choose Screen Clipping. It is important that we realize that what it's going to go to when we choose Screen Clipping is the last window that was active before our Word document was active. So we have to make sure that we've kind of opened things or at least activated them in the right space. You also notice that it came up initially with everything in full fidelity, and then it kind of grayed everything out. That's going to make it easier for us to see exactly what we're selecting. So what I've done is I've opened up, already in my web browser, the You Got It training website, which is www.yougotit.info. You can access that site as well, or any site that you'd rather use. Now we simply need to click and drag with the crosshair pointer to select the areas that we want. This particular web page kind of has some borders off to the side. We don't want that. We just want the main page. So I'll press and hold my left mouse button drag down, and this is where you can kind of see the content gets to be revealed, which makes it nice. We'll select everything all the way down to the taskbar at the bottom. Something about like that. And when we let go of our mouse button, it's simply going to return us to our Word document with the screenshot inserted. Isn't that cool? Now, at this point, everything else that we do is going to be exactly the same, whether we inserted it as a picture, or even clip art, or in this case, a screenshot. Let's do just a few things with this so we can use some of the 2010 tools. I think we'll start by just resizing. I'll go ahead and grab the upper right handle, drag that down just a bit. Then I want to go ahead and center it on the page. So we'll go to Home, and we'll click Center. Now we want to get back to the Picture Tools. And remember that when we have a picture selected, we have a single contextual tab called Format. From here, we can choose things like picture styles, which are really a combination of borders, effects, and possibly even layouts. From the drop-down, we'll just make a quick choice here. 
I think that I'm probably going to like something that has a little bit of pizzazz to it. So let's try this one that's on the first column, about the fourth or fifth row down. It happens to be called Bevel Perspective. We'll give that a click. And now instead of just our website, we actually have something that looks like it's highly stylized. Rounded edges, angled, 3D, shadow, and everything else. Again, we could work with all of these independently using the different features that are available on the ribbon. Likewise, we could work with its position on the page, how text wraps around it, and we could even rotate it, size it, crop it, and work with the actual width and height of the image itself. Don't forget that one of the wonderful things in 2010 is the entire adjust group at the left-hand side, which allows us to do some very dramatic things as far as color corrections and even adding artistic effects. But for our purposes, this just kind of gives us a little bit of extra zap to what we're going to talk about with the website. We do notice that since we are doing the rounded rectangle, that we might need to change a little bit of what we grabbed from the screen because some of it's getting cut off. But again, those are just details. You get the basic ideas of how to work with images. There are a couple of images, primarily the You Got It logo, as well as an example of virtual training, that you'll find in your Chapter 6 Project Files folder if you want to practice working with additional picture features. The second thing we want to talk about, as far as these graphical types of elements in a Word document, is Word Art. Word Art has been around for a long time in Office. It allows us to create shaped text and is useful to add emphasis or to highlight specific areas of a document. I have to be honest that I personally use it more in PowerPoint than I do in Word, but it has its uses here as well. The You Got It Business Plan has a section for a copy of the Building Floor Plan, but that Building Floor Plan is not available yet as we're currently working with the architect. So we want to put something in there as a placeholder. We don't want to actually take out the section, we just want to put something in there until we get the actual picture. Let's go ahead and press Control End to move back to the end of the document and then scroll up just a line or two where we can see the building floor plan section. Here we can go ahead and give this a click, and I'm thinking this might be a good place to put in some word art. I'm going to press enter just to add a little bit of extra spacing or white space, and now we want to insert the word art itself. Let's go ahead and click on our insert tab, and moving about three quarters of the way across the screen, in the text group we have the word art drop down. And we start by actually selecting kind of the sample of what we want to create. Now it doesn't matter to me which one you select, generally you're probably going to pick word art that you will try to stick with as far as style goes, but for our purposes right now it doesn't really matter exactly which one you pick because we're going to change most of it anyway. I'll go ahead and just give one of them a click. That inserts a text box and it tells us we need to type our text here. What we want to type is simply coming soon. Word art is kind of an interesting creature because it's kind of a text box and kind of a shape. We notice that it comes into its own box, kind of like a text box, and then it also has sizing handles. Naturally, this means that we can move it and size it. We could, for example, get the four-headed arrow and drag it where we want it to go. And we could resize it as well, perhaps making it just a little bit smaller. The other things that we can do are going to be found, of course, in the ribbon. Notice that we have the Format tab for Drawing Tools. So almost everything we're about to do would apply to the things that you can do with shapes as well. We can insert shapes, of course. We can work with different edit points on them. But more importantly, everything has, again, just like our pictures, a style. We can choose a style from the gallery, or we can simply choose our own components by choosing fill colors, outlines, and even shape effects. When we display the Shape Effects option, we see presets, shadows, reflections, glows, soft edges, bevels, and 3D rotation, just like we would see for other objects including pictures. If we wanted to apply some of these, we certainly could by simply again making the choice. What we see that is unique though to WordArt is this group right in the middle of the ribbon called WordArt Styles. The quick styles are the same things that we saw when we first created it. But if we don't like those, and we had to make a choice anyway, now is our chance to fix it. This is where we can change the color of the text, as well as the outline color of the text, and maybe even more importantly, we can work with the text effects. Now the first thing that we looked at over on the left was shape effects. That was for kind of the box itself. This is where we get into the effects of the text. They're two different things. 
even though they appear to be very similar in many ways, like shadow, reflection, glow, bevel, and 3D rotation. But notice here we have transform. And this is where we actually get the shapes of the text that we want for word art. So if we wanted this text to be something other than just flat, perhaps maybe like a wave or an arc or something like that, we can go ahead and choose that here. I'm going to click on Chevron Up. Now once we get all of this done, that's where we can see we might need to start adjusting the size and position of the box that the word art goes in itself. In my case, it got too small, so let me just make that a little bit larger. And with shape text, it's important to realize that changing the size is where you get the dramatic effects. When this is a very tall box, the chevron shape is much more obvious than if it is a shorter box. We can spend literally hours and hours playing with all of the options, and I think there are literally a limitless number of things that you can do. But those are the basic features that you need to know about working with word art. And remember, they likewise apply to things like pictures as well as shapes. That brings us to one of my favorite improvements from Office 2007 that has been thankfully carried over to Office 2010. It's called SmartArt. It replaced the short-lived diagrams that we found in Office 2003 and gives us the ability to create fabulous professional diagrams to better illustrate things like lists, processes, and other types of relationships of information. I know we already know how to get information into a Word document. That's what sentences and paragraphs are about. But we have to remember that sometimes we need things to be a little bit more elegant or be presented in a little bit different way than just paragraphs. Word started as a word processor, but it's really almost bridging now over to a page design program where everything doesn't just have to be paragraphs and sentences. This is one of those times. We know that Word is text-centric, but we also know that we need to utilize the best possible means to communicate our message. So let's go ahead and do a quick search for SmartArt so that we can find it in our document and show you how to insert a diagram. We'll press Control F. And we don't care about the text box called Coming Soon. Instead, we want to find SmartArt. There should only be one. We'll go ahead and click on that. And close out our navigation pane. And let's get rid of the tag. And here's what we want to be good working with. It makes sense that in a business plan, somebody wants to know how the organization is structured. This again is something that is often put as part of a bulleted list, but an actual org chart is much more visual. If we go to the Insert tab, we have the option to insert SmartArt from the Illustrations group. If you haven't seen this before, I recommend that you take a little bit of time kind of exploring what all of these different categories are. There are many that are here, and we can get some very wonderful results by utilizing them. We are specifically interested in something called a hierarchy category, which would of course be an org chart. And what you will see is that we have several different options for org charts, including in 2010, the ability to include pictures. We're going to stick with the basics, so we'll double click just a plain old org chart, the first option, and that inserts it into our document. The next question is, how do we get information into the org chart? Well, we actually can click and type directly into SmartArt Elements, but I find that to be the difficult way. Instead, we also notice that when the SmartArt is selected, that we have two contextual tabs, Design and Format. And from the Design Contextual tab, the very first column, we have the option to turn on a text pane. This actually allows us to use a simple bulleted list to determine the structure of the diagram. Again, we go over a lot of these details in the Shared Features course, so we're not going to do it here, but we'll just get started with what we know we need for the You Got It training organization. Let's start by typing President CEO. And then you see that there is a soft return. Let's see what happens when we start typing here. This is probably the most challenging part of SmartArt. You have to understand for each individual chart type how indents in the hierarchy of the bulleted list affect it. In this case, by coming down to the next level, we're actually going down to the next shape. We don't want to do that, so let's just press backspace a couple of times, get rid of all of that, and then move down to this second level bullet point. What we can see is that for an org chart, the second level is actually going to be whatever is underneath the first level. 
So the president oversees everything. Then within that, there is a training department. Let's press enter and tab. And again, this is just bulleted list techniques here. Nothing specific to SmartArt. That gives us an indent, which is going to create a level below training. For example, here we might put in instructors. So I think you can see very quickly how we get to convert typing text onto a plain Word document instead into being part of a SmartArt diagram. Yes, there is a little bit more to it, but I think you get the idea, and at least we've shown you how you can utilize it inside a Word document. I think I'd rather view a diagram like this rather than try to read a multi-level list within the document itself. When it's ultimately finished, it's going to provide not only the roles within the organization, but also the arrangement so it's easy to understand the hierarchy as well as the individual job roles. SmartArt is just one of the tools that kind of wrap up this other content type of category that we have to cover with Word. It basically means anything that's not regular text. And as we've seen, there's a lot of it. It includes tables, spreadsheets, charts, images, and WordArt too. All of these features are like customizations that we can add when we build a house. All houses have a foundation and walls. Usually they have a roof too. That's like our text. What makes a home unique though, and more interesting to look at and live in, are the customizations. We don't have to have them, but when someone is walking through our house with customizations, they might say, wow, that's nice. This particular house has a walk-in pantry and fireplace, and that's what makes your house a little bit nicer than maybe others that they've seen. For our documents, these little customizations or accessories add visual impact and give our documents that wow factor too. And beyond just communicating some text, we need to have that wow factor to keep people engaged and show them the top of our performance.